Okay, now what I want to do is drill down a little bit more on the out-of-the-box activity reports. And it's easy because there's really just one. Okay, This is actually a reasonably good report, especially if your users are, are doing activities. But there's a few tricks you can do with this to make it a little bit more useful. So what I want to do is I'm going to go through a process and expose this report on a dashboard. I want Once you get users trained to use dashboards, I think one nice thing about dashboards is they can control the user experience better, make it easier, and do things like pre-filter the data how you want it filtered for your users. And I'll show you what I mean by this. So I'm going to go through as kind of a step-by-step -step process. I'm going to edit the default filter for the activities report. Then, two is kind of an asterisk. I want to make sure that the people that it's intended for have enough privileges. You'd be surprised how, how limited um, privileges in the default security roles are to view reports. I'll show you what I mean by that. Then I'm going to go through this, these next few things here, kind of a trick to take a report and put it onto a dashboard. I need to get a URL, and then I'm going to use an iframe. There's no, you can't put a report directly on a dashboard. You can put an iframe on a dashboard, and anything with a URL can be included in the iframe, but you can't put the report directly on the dashboard. So let me show you how you go through this process and show you what the result is. I'll show this again in production. So we've got some good data in here. So if I go to Dashboards, Workplace, and I click on Activities, All Users, Last 90 Days, this is the default Activities report. And it's exposed, and you'll see this in a minute, in what's referred to as an iframe. And you'll see it down here, what we have is reasonably good report. Okay, and you can see we have some sort of a usability, user adoption issue when it comes to activity record types. Mary and I are um, the ones that spend the bulk of the time in our CRM and consequently have the most activities. But you can see what this out-of-the-box report does. It's actually a pretty good report. It creates this stacked bar chart, which you cannot create in the built-in chart designer. And it creates, you know, for each data point by user, it creates, you know, you've got multiple data points for the, all the different kinds of activities. Okay. And this is a scenario here where you might want to remember one of my favorite arcane keyboard shortcuts in Dynamic Serum 2011, which is Control Shift 5. Let's try that. See what that does. Control Shift 5 disappears the ribbon. So for something like this where you want more real estate, you can just do Control Shift 5. It also refreshes that. Form. You can click this one here to give yourself give a little bit more room here. Notice that does not refresh the view. Okay, so I get a slightly better view here. All right. So anyway, that's your Control Shift Five. Don't forget that arcane keyboard shortcut. Okay. So now, how do I get that on a dashboard though? Because where is that report normally? Here's the normal experience. You go to Reports, and you kind of start looking around here. And you see, aha, there's an activities report. What does this thing do? That's the report. And if you click it, suppose I double click it from here. Here's the typical user experience. This is kind of ugly. Then you got this filter. And the default filter, by the way, if you do this, it's not 90 days. It's going to be something like, I think it's 14 days. Last X days is 14. So. How would you actually, con so you want to convert this out-of-the-box experience to something that's more controlled via the dashboard route? Well, there's a couple of things you start with. First thing is select the report and choose Edit Default Filter. That's how I got it to 90 days. So you can change things if you want. This report, though, I like it. It's perfect except for that one thing. So that's when I change that to 90 days. So let's suppose I change that to you know, let's go back another month. So I'll save the default filter. And you can test it from here, by the way. It's possible to, you know, have a filter that's too big and you, you could maybe return too much data or something like that, but this should still work. So I'll go ahead and just close it. Okay, so I've saved the default filter. Now, notice if I click Run Report here, I'm going to get a different experience than if I double click the report which I always found a little bit, it's not, not exactly intuitively obvious from birth that that's what would happen. 
So here's the scenario that I was, you know, this would be better. So if I was just, you know, telling users how to run this report, I'd say, get the default filter right, and then just go highlight the report and click run. And that way you don't have to, you know, save you a little keystroke here. But there's one more thing I can do. If I open up a new window based on this thing right here, you can't see my fingers now, but I just did control N. So I just opened up a new window based on that one. So it's going to include the same information, but it's going to have a window with the URL. And this is the key point to exposing this in a dashboard. So this is what I want the user experience to be in a dashboard. And in that case, what I do is I'm just going to do, you know, like control A and then control C. So I want to copy that. So now I've got the URL on the clipboard. Then what I can do, I'll just close out of all these things here. Then I just go and make the dashboard and I'll show you how this works. So effectively, when I created the dashboard that exposes a report, so any reporting services report, or for that matter, any web page that you can get to, you can use this trick to expose it on a dashboard. I go to dashboards, activities, all users, last 90 days. Let's edit this dashboard. Maximize this. This dashboard, notice it just has one component on it. It's got one really big component. So what I did when I created this, was I probably used, uh, you have to use, when you create a new dashboard, you have to use one of the templates. So I just used the one that, you know, probably had the, the fewest components on it because I just deleted them all and kept one. And if you haven't done this before, what you'll do is you'll do this thing here. You can use these controls in the layout to manipulate the size, basically how big these components are. In this case, can see what's going on. It started maybe like this, and then I went to increase the width until it took up the whole thing, and then I increased the height, and I deleted the other components. And I made sure that the thing I in included here, I inserted this iframe. So I wanted to insert an iframe component because what iframes do, if I edit the component, is they have a URL. So that's the whole point of an iframe. It just exposes a URL. And this is what I had on the clipboard. This is that URL of the reporting services report. So every report, every form, every view in Dynamic CRM is uniquely identified by a URL. And you can use that trick to pretty good advantage in this. So I just remember that. So anything that you can navigate to in a form in Dynamic CRM or a viewer, the report viewer in this case, you could expose onto a dashboard. One thing that I'll notice that I'll note here, and I'll put up a blog post about this because I think it's an important thing and it's easy to miss this one here. But in a reporting services report, you want if you want the user experience to be to run the report, it's going to be question mark action equals run, and that'll pop the report up. So if you have question mark action equals filter, it'll bring up the filter. You'll see that by default a lot of times. Okay, if the URL has that, it'll still work, but the user experience would require another click. So you usually want question mark action equals run there. So then what you get is this kind of controlled dashboard experience that will let you do that. Um, but the, the, the format of the URL is always going to be something like this. So anything that you can get onto the clipboard, right, you can use expose it on a dashboard. Um, and exposing it on a dashboard in that way, it's going to respect all the same security privileges. So if somebody doesn't have permissions to view reports, you can get an error message there. And let me show you what I ma mean by this. I, I mentioned that that privileges are not as widely granted to reports as you might think. And let me show you what I mean by that, because this is definitely something that if you as a system administrator simply do that, create a report, put it out there, or use one of the default reports, and put it on a dashboard and expose it to users, users might have access to the underlying records but still get an ugly error message when they try to run the report. For this reason here, let me show you how this works. If you go to security roles, let's suppose I choose the salesperson security role. And this is not, believe me, I'm not going to give you a discourse on security roles here. But I want to show you this because it is kind of an important one, not, not necessarily intuitive thing. 
If I click on the customization tab for each security, every security role, I'll see this. You scroll down here and you see system chart and system forms. Okay, system chart, system form. What these are? Well, you can probably guess what system chart is. That's a chart. So if the user, if the administrator has exposed a chart, then you're either going to have read privilege to it, that's what the second column is, so it means somebody with this security role will be able to see all system charts and system forms. What are these system forms? Those are dashboards. That's what I mentioned earlier about dashboards having, it's all or nothing. If you can see any system dashboard or a chart, you can see all of them. Those aren't very granular security roles. That's why sometimes you need to do sharing. But by default, all security roles have those. So by default, all users can see those. But let's look at core records and scroll down a little bit and notice report. Report, these are the reports that are exposed in that workplace reports area. And notice by default, most users don't have much in the way of privileges at all on reports. So if I've got a report out there and as a system administrator, it's assigned to me because I created it and it's up there and a user that I want to see it only has user level read privilege on report, they won't be able to see it. So this is just something that you got to keep in mind. If you're going to expose reports out like that, you do, you will generally need to grant security roles permissions to those things. And that's a little bit tricky. The issue here is since users by default will have access to system forms, that security role gives them access to this, so they'll be able to go select this thing right here, they'll see it, but they might not have access to the report that you've exposed on the dashboard component, in this case, the activities report. So then at this point you get an ugly error message and you can't figure out what it is, and that's, that's what's going on there anyway.